Hello, welcome to LEV Toys. We are continuing on with the Ninjago City build. This is such a massive one. We're meeting the next minifigure. This here is Juno. She is a fashion designer and she does look very stylish. She's got two faces, one with some sunglasses, some groovy sunglasses and very cute flippy outy hair, but we'll turn it around back to her normal face and she gets a parasol an orange parasol for shading her face while she's wandering around Ninjago City. Well, now that we've met Juno, we can start with the next shop in our Ninjago City build. There is so much still to be seen. If you haven't seen part one and part two of the Ninjago City build, where we have a look at all the stuff below what we're currently building now, because Ninjago City just piles up on top of itself, make sure you check those builds out. The links are on the little eye up in the corner. And But do make sure you come back because there's so much more to see. This here is the fashion shop and Juno is currently in charge. She's standing behind the counter. And there's that thing with an M on it. I don't know what that is. A lot of the stuff in this shop is open to interpretation. You, you have to decide while you're playing with it what it's going to be. These gold pieces over here and these orange pieces here, I think are clothes piled up in different sizes, but obviously in the same colour but different sizes for those ones. And in the middle, we're going to have a display for hats. And look at that, there are stairs outside. There's a laddery thing outside. It's such an interesting build. It's all so interesting. There's a ramp here now. Oh, what's gonna go on that? It's so cool. So more gold clothes there, more orange clothes here. And now we've got, these are on the outside. Something's going to be behind behind Juno there. This is actually the biggest shop, or the biggest area of all of them so far. Oh, there's a bar behind her. Okay. All right. What do we have here? It's a display stand of some description. It's a display for phones. I wonder if they're the newest ones. They all seem to be the same. So a phone display stand over here on a little jumper so we can take it in and out if we want to. That's very cool. And now we're putting those fantastic new banister pieces in with that new design. They look so spiffy. And some displays here. And it's a purple one for, oh, a hat. <laughs> a purple hat and a helmet with a party hat in it. <laughs> and a blue helmet. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh, okay, and a goblet and a pink gem and a bowler hat and a safari hat. So obviously the citizens of Ninjago City <laughs> have got eclectic tastes in their headwear. Over here is Guy, a uh, full Guy outfit, displaying an, the new scarf piece and another cool little orange hat. And here's another Guy over here. And this is displaying, oh, okay, so a ninja helmet. So th that's appropriate for what we're expecting to see. A skateboard. Oh, this, this goes over here on the display. This shop has everything including the wackiest hats you ever saw, and a gold frog. A golden frog up here, just one of them. They must be pretty rare. <laughs> and over here on top of, above the displays is a security camera. That's important. This is obviously a high-end fashion store with those sort of crazy hats, fancy hats, fantastic hats, and another security camera over on that side. Oh, looking at <laughs> Juno. Okay. Now we've got what looks like might be the air conditioning units again. We've seen some like this already. And now we've got two doors, one here behind the checkout area, and it just goes nowhere. It's got a bar on it to stop it from opening. And here's the front door over here. So that's kind of cool. It's like the door has been barred off because I wonder where it leads to. We'll find that out when we attach it to the rest of Ninjago City. <laughs> This is just so interesting to build. Now, what is this? We're putting a blue guitar on this. Is it a guitar? A guitar display. Oh, look at that cool rounded window piece. That's fantastic. I don't have anything else with that piece in it. That is so cool. And there's the other one on the other side to attach it in here. Whoa, that looks so snazzy. <laughs> okay. This is really, really, really looking very, very good. Now we've got these pillars in a lovely blue with some, okay. Wow, that's an interesting design choice. <laughs> it looks really good. So there are guitars hanging upside down in the display outside the shop. 
and it just it adds some interesting texture to that they'll look really interesting from a distance and close up they just look really fun here we go there so the shop's done on the outside and the inside. We just need to smooth over the top so that the next layers on top can go on nice and smoothly. And we're up to bag number 12. There are 16 bag numbered bags in this build, so we're still going. Here we got Lloyd. Oop, and his head's trying to get away. Lloyd Garmadon. And this is him in his mufti gear. So he, he, hold on, Tommy. Hi. Tommy loves the Green Ninja, but he's not supposed to know that Lloyd is the Green Ninja. Maybe he's just really happy to see somebody wearing green. So Tommy's finally changed his face around to happy, so that's good. <laughs> I'm glad to see somebody's cheered up. Now I don't know quite what I'm building. Oh, okay, so that goes outside the shop. Oh, okay, so this is an extension for the elevator and some big archways here. It's all just so interesting how they all get joined together and how the textures change and the colours change and yet it all is kind of a cohesive mess, if that makes any sense. That's kind of a juxtaposition, cohesive mess. But this is cool here too. Look at this. So we're snapping those in. That's behind the elevator. There's a bit of a dead space behind that. I could hide something in there before I put the lid on. <laughs> now we would never get it out. But look at that. That's this big splash of colour. It's And it's just really, it really is just for decoration. It looks great. Now, our next control panel for the elevator is on. And we're continuing smoothing over our shop level. And now we're getting our elevatory bits the bits that the elevator is going to go up and down. Excellent. Now, an open grill piece. We had one of these down in Sweep's shack, right back down on the first floor. A little robot who does all the cleaning. I haven't seen him for a while. I wonder who, what he's cleaning at the moment. But this now looks like, it's definitely not going to be a shop. It looks like an area that shouldn't be up here, because up here is where the very expensive businesses take place. Look at that. Okay, so this is an unfinished part of the building where a tree has taken root. So we're seeing the roots swirling around and that goes here. So that's where our, our door to nowhere, where it was going to go over to. Maybe it was going to be an extension for the shop or I don't know what, but it hasn't actually been finished. And a tree has taken root, a cherry tree has taken root in that little building. And that's the trunk sticking out. It's growing off on an awkward angle like trees generally do or plants do when they're in these sort of areas. Oh, look at that. Okay, okay, this is really, really exciting. Putting a little piece of nature in the middle of the city. Oh, I love this. It's just such a whimsical addition. Okay, lots of clips on the top, which means we're going to be putting some more of these little grilled walkways along. And they're lovely and secure. And now, I suspect this is going to be a roof piece of some description, maybe, or an overhang. Let's have a look. Uh... Oh, okay, so this hangs off the bottom of our unfinished room here. And let's install it. Let's see where it goes. So up, up, up. Oh, look at that. So the tree is going to be over the top of the comic shop. There's our elevator. We'll just make sure that's all lined up. Oh, that looks great. And there's a little grill there. So when they come up on the elevator, they can oh, they can go across the grill into the shop or all the way up to the top like Tommy just showed us. And the roots of the cherry tree are coming out of the piping. Oh, that is so awesome. The detail in this is just mind blowing. Okay, we're heading back down again to start building our, oh, we're going to keep going with the tree. So the cherry tree needs some nice big gnarly looking branches and of course some flowers. Beautiful pink cherry blossoms. So let's take this up and we'll install it. There are all sorts of crazy things happening in Ninjago City today. 
There we are, the first branch. Now, we need to fill it out a bit. Fantastic, and now it needs a whole heap of foliage. So four of these, and then we're gonna position them so that they really, they really make that, that branch look blooming. <laughs> Fill it out beautifully. Okay, so where do they go? There, and we're clipping them on, and there, and we can kind of, we can kind of fiddle around with them to angle them however we think looks best. Fabulous! So, so fabulous. Now our hats go in the middle, four of them, all in the same colour. Obviously the fashion this season. There they are, <laughs> right in the middle of the shop. And Lloyd's checking them out. He looks as though he might be going to buy one of those. And look at our tree. It's all just so gorgeous. And now we're up to level three, the high rise. And we're going to start on the sushi restaurant. We're up to bag number 13. And our next minifigure is Misako, Lloyd's mum with her winky face. And she's got that cool new hairpiece, which you can also get, well, in lots of other sets as well. And here is Lloyd's ninja outfit. Complete. Uh, it looks a bit creepy now with that with that black headpiece in there. That head that head holder area. Let's put let's let's dress Lloyd up. There we go. And we'll uh well, now, now that looks creepy too. And, oh, look, here comes Tommy. Tommy's seen the green ninja. Yeah. Now Tommy's truly happy. And we can start on Masako and Lloyd's apartment. Now, a real estate up here in the high rise area is phenomenally expensive. So this is going to be the teeniest, tiniest apartment you've ever seen. There's already one bed down there. And we're just going to have to identify each of the pieces as they come in. But look at that floor space. Not a lot of room at all. It's going to be very snug and cosy for Lloyd and his mum. So these are little booky kind of things, bookshelf things, maybe clothes stacked in there. And there's a table over here right next to the bed. And a little set of drawers. It's so compact. And some beautiful decoration that's actually on the outside of the apartment. So it's going to be going to be able to see it from the outside, which is good. And we've put our little... Ah, okay. So this sticker here, this is Masako's little photo that goes next to her bed with Masako and Garmadon and Lloyd in it. Out on an adventure, out on, on a family holiday by the look of it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so cute. So that's down there, down in the bottom, in the bottom of the bunk bed. So she must sleep on the bottom. And a little TV with GDN on it for good day, Ninjago. And that's sitting on top of the desk and drawers there. This is filling up very well. We're going to need some light in there. Be nice if we had a window. I can see a space for a window. So this is going to be decorating the outside as well. And some more of the bookcase. So we're going to need some more of whatever it is that's going into the bookcase. I'm really not sure what these are. Could be anything. They're ornamentations of some sort. They look pretty. It's all stacked up. It'd be all their belongings. There's nowhere else for them to store things. It's so small, such a small space. And here's a lovely window to let some light and air through. And Masako is going to see if she can fit here on the bottom bunk while we put some air conditioning in or a vent of some description. And oh, look at that. Huh? It's a microwave. Oh, look at that. That goes on top, on top of the, <laughs> on top of the TV. That's such a cute design. That's so clever. And up here are some knickknacks. There's a trophy. And I think that's possibly another trophy and just kind of unidentifiable decorative knickknacks. Let's call them. You can identify them as much as you like if you want. Feel free to tell me in the comments what you think they might be. And the doors on here, they don't get a sliding rice paper door in their little apartment. Hmm. Hmm. 
beautiful. We've almost smoothed off all the way on the top and around the outsides. And now we need the next bed here, which is going to be Lloyd's. He sleeps on the top bunk and his little picture here has got a picture of uh, Jackie Chan. So uh, ED are, the, are what those symbols say for Eye of the Dragon. <laughs> so he's got that up there as his little decoration. We might take him out of his ninja gear. Hold on, no, <laughs> there we are. So he can tuck into the bunk bed and he can demonstrate how this is all gonna work. There! So they do both fit in there, except Masako, I've just pushed her out. <laughs> Sorry, Masako, this is gonna take a little bit of wiggling, I think, to be able to fit them both in at the same time. I think her hair with the red hair sticks in it are making this a little bit difficult, but I know they can both fit in there. That is just the cutest little apartment ever. Now we've got some more of this, well, we had some of this same, oh look, a repeated section actually. We had that outside the cherry tree little apartment. So that's cool, that makes it a bit cohesive as we're building. And now we need the rooftop. And the roof has got a special feature. So check this out, we got one side, we've got the other side, and now we need the roof, the bit along the top. And there's even a spot there for a satellite dish <laughs> so they can get reception on their television. And there is a place for him to hide his ninja suit up in the roof. How cool is that? It's very cool. <laughs> well, I think it is. So this goes here on top. Oh, that's why we had that same little roof section. It all is very cohesive. So that's how they're going to be living up there in that tiny apartment right up here in the high rise. We're up to bag number 14 and we meet the next minifigure. So we've got another ninja. We've got... We've got Jay here with a really cross, well, determined face and an everyday face as well. And he's got a weapon with some kind of sharp pointy bit on the end, which would certainly look as though it would hurt if you whapped, you got whapped with that. So we'll put him over there out of the way because we're still just building buildings. We're not busy fighting villains at the moment. Jay, we'll call you in if we find any villains, but we need to build a high-end sushi restaurant for the very top of this building. Oh, look at that clever little roof panel. They're all made of, out of single door pieces. <laughs> That's clever. So the sushi restaurant has got some traditional elements to its architecture up here on the roofing. And now we are com well, completing our elevator. We're not just continuing it because this is where, where the elevator comes to the very top, to the sushi restaurant right at the top of Ninjago City. So we're making a massive floor plan here. And there are all these little partitioned areas that aren't making sense yet, but they will make sense, of course, as we build them up and as we add more details to them. So we'll get all of this basic brickwork in here, though none of it's basic, all of it is interesting. There's our control panel for the top of the elevator. A bit more to add to the roofing overhang. And here is, yes, definitely the last bit of our elevator. And we're up to bag number 15. So we get to meet yet another minifigure. Now, who have we got here? We've got a villain! We've got a bad guy! And he certainly looks bad because he's being hit by a fish. <laughs> this is the Shark Army Gunner. He is the only villain in this set that's included in this set, which is kind of cool because the city's all about civilians and Jay's just dealing with that Shark Army Gunner, so they're out there. <laughs> sorting that out and we'll keep building the sushi restaurant and Garmadon doesn't come with this set and we'll sit him down here though at the sushi restaurant at the big sushi table 
we just need to try these chairs out just to make sure that they all work. <laughs> we might bring some extra minifigures in. So here's another one from the minifigure series. She's also part of the shark army and <laughs> she looks worried. She's having lunch with, with Masako. They can have a bit of a chat about what's important in life. And we've got a couple more seats to put in. There we are. Lovely. And this one is not a, well, it is, it's a table that stands by the, the entrance by the elevator and it's got all the sushi prices on it. Fantastic. So right there, we can see how much it's going to cost when you order each particular plate. And we do have a sushi train to build, <laughs> which is so cool. So let's do that. A little sushi conveyor belt, my favorite way to get sushi. Here we go. So when we turn that, it's obviously all going to go around, but we haven't got anything to go around yet. We still need to put in the rest of the big table, which is what these are going to be. The big table around the conveyor belt. <laughs> Fantastic. And here is where the chef is going to stand to prepare the meals. So there is a big cleaver there and a fish waiting to be sectioned and cleaned and ready to be eaten. And now we need the goey roundy bit. <laughs> the bit that's gonna make, uh, wait, make the sushi arrive to the table and everybody can choose the sushi that they want. So if we connect all of these around, check this out, we ready? So it goes in like that and when we turn, ta-da! Simple and so effective and fantastically fun. So now we need some sushi. So let's make some sushi. Now, because they actually need to slot into the roundy bit, the goey roundy bit, this is how the sushi has been done. I'm disappointed that we aren't using actual sushi pieces, but obviously we're using upside down bricks and the sushi printed pieces don't work like that. I'm sure that the designers would have thought very hard about how to integrate them and just couldn't, but maybe in the future. Maybe there could be a mod for how we could actually put proper little sushi printed tiles on there. All right, we're done with the sushi table itself. Now we've got this cute little thing that goes in the corner, which I can't get to attach properly. There we go. A bit of thumping worked for it. There's some stairs that go up to it. And now we're doing a bit more of the roof. Finish off the facade here of the sushi restaurant. And then we'll find out what that little building is, where the stairs go up to. Excellent. All the balustrades getting put on so nobody falls off. That would be a long way to fall down smoothing over the top to make it look really classy and hiding in here we've got a mustache and a hat because the crab chef could also be the sushi chef but apparently see like that but apparently the crab chef and the sushi chef are actually brothers look here he is and the sushi chef is not included in this set he comes in the minifigure series so because I've got him, we can put the disguise away and we can put him in here in charge of the sushi and Severin Black, who is the crab guy, can go back to his restaurant and they don't need to argue at all. And we'll put these stickers on so we know that it's sushi, sushi, sushi up here and it's all looking very, very good. Now, let's install our sushi restaurant at the top. Look at that. There, so we'll put Severin, Severin back down here. And that looks absolutely stunning. We're up to bag number 16. This is the last marking of the bags. And we've got the, our last minifigure too, who is an officer. This is Officer Noonan. So in a city this size, they only have one police officer. No wonder they have such a trouble with <laughs> trouble with the law. So now we've got some of s s just some great little architectural features. Here's the antenna for the broadcasting for the TV stations and stuff like that, or well, one of them anyway. We've got a few more to do now, but before we do them, we get to find out where those steps were leading to. What do you need in a restaurant? Yes, you need a toilet. 
see Jay is demonstrating very nicely what <laughs> how we use that and we of course also need a basin to wash your hands this is a very fancy fancy little bathroom and it's got some classy looking rice paper walls on it and some of these cool little pieces that go on the side which are going to add some fantastic architectural beauty to the whole thing when we put it together there's a pink toilet roll so pink toilet paper in this toilet <laughs> this bathroom and an air freshener up here a little cherry air freshener <laughs> cherry blossoms <laughs> well, it should be cherry blossoms shouldn't it? i don't think a cherry actually smells like anything at all and we're ready there's a sliding door there so let's put our little architecturally bits on You'll see how they work as we go along because we're going to add more on top of this bathroom. So let's take it up and install the bathroom so all the customers can go to the toilet. There, Jay just fell out. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, above the bathroom is, yeah, just, just a fantastic little piece of architectural fantasticness I've run out of words because it just looks so good and <laughs> I've just used so many describing words for this whole build I just don't know what else to use I need to get a thesaurus because I've used them all up because it's all just been fantastic and fabulous and awesome and wonderful and just such a, a really enjoyable build to do so interesting so colorful <laughs> and really very funny too And then we got this enormous big bullseye right in the middle at the top of Ninjago City. Check that out, the big hollow space. And then on the top of it, right up the very top, we're going to be putting some more satellite dishes or some more uh, antennae for the TV stations, the broadcasting necessities. There we go. There's one satellite dishy thing. There's two satellite dishy things. Oh, that's not going on. What have I done wrong? Oh, hold on. I've put that around the wrong way. Now that fits. Good. And I love the fact that it's a fishing line that, <laughs> that does that. And some more of these pokey outy things on the side, which add, which, which, well, they tie in with our toilet down there. And that looks great, but we're still not finished yet because we've got these cute little decorations to go up here in the sushi restaurant they are just adorable check this guy out oh hold on we're not supposed to open it like that I just flicked a piece off that is a little squid and he's got some bright green eyes <laughs> and he needs a knob on the back so that he can go in here you can angle him around <laughs> isn't he cute we need some more customers up here in the restaurant they're busily eating while we build the last cutie pie for this whole set. And it really is such a cutie pie. Check out how this all goes together. This is like a puffer fish balloon, which is going to be floating, hanging, kind of suspended at the top of the sushi restaurant. And the way it's all put together is just a design masterpiece. It's just just brilliant a little hat on the on the top it's hilarious and oh, hold on let's see if I can get it to all stay together when I put the rod in the bottom there we go let's take him up and install him up here hanging off the top of the sushi restaurant look how cute is that oh my goodness <laughs> there is so much to see here in Ninjago City the last thing we've got to do though very last thing is one more sign there's one more sticker left and this one says rice and shine it's a pun so for rise and shine but instead it's rice and shine <laughs> nothing like a pun to finish off such an immense build so there you have it here it is Ninjago City in its entirety there were so many hours of building that went into this and so many hours of editing but there are so many details and so much fun stuff to see that I'm glad that you've, you've stuck with me for the whole three videos it was worth seeing 
each of the little parts being built you can't see all of that from the outside and this is going to look fantastic displayed and being played with we are going to have a marvelous time with this my kids and I <laughs> there's so much going on in this city already and we haven't even brought in all of the villains or all of the ninjas so what do you think is Ninjago City one of your favorite builds too it's definitely mine I've never enjoyed building anything quite as much as this and I really hope we see more buildings like this or more in this really whimsical style it is just an absolute joy to build I hope you enjoyed watching it and building it with me. Thank you so much for watching. Do make sure you subscribe. Click the little bell on the top. And that way you do find out when new videos go up. Give me a thumbs up. That way I know that you have enjoyed the video too. And your comments. I love to read them. Let me know what you thought. And I'll be back with a new video very, very soon.